Howdy folks, Nick Tockert here with the Historical Fencing Guild. Well folks, picking your primary weapon is a difficult and challenging issue. You need to do a lot of research to find out, as a, especially as a two-weapon fighter, what fits your style, your price bracket, your range, and what lets you do what you need to do. We talk about that a lot. It's something I'm glad to help with, and it has nothing to do with what we're doing today. Today, we're talking about Nick Tockert's, that's me, top three offhand weapons. The three trainers to get you going in dual wielding things to make life easier on you and to not break the bank. So let's get into it. Number one, Cold Steel Parry Dagger. This is the Cold Steel Parry Dagger Trainer. It comes in black. All my offhand weapons, because I use them often during practices when lighting is bad, have been spray painted bright orange. That So don't let that color fool you. This is light at just a few ounces. It is perfect for people who have smaller hands, who have uh, strength issues in their arms, or really aren't sure. The reason why this teaches people how to dagger fence. What do I mean? Let me just go off camera. Here we go. Our friend. Right hand, left hand. Now, dagger fencing is complex and difficult. And guess what? We're gonna make it really quick and dirty right now. Parry up to block the high line, parry down to block the low line. Sword takes care of everything else. If you absolutely have to, cross parry high or cross parry low as what's called a hanging parry. This trains you. Why? Put your flat of your thumb right where it's nice and flat here. Base that out. Line this offset parry bar, the quillions, in line with your wrist. Park it in front of you with your short arm. Not fully extended, although it can be. It's more comfortable to be slightly cocked back. And just windshield wiper. It's educational, it's efficient, and in 30 years of doing it, I've yet to find a better fencing parry dagger. Plus, you can get these sub-20 bucks. I've been known to find them eight or nine, and then I give them away. Um, I haven't lately, but so if you see them, buy, save yourself from one, buy yourself two. Cold Steel, who makes this, and actually makes all three of these trainers are made by Cold Steel. I'm not sponsored by Cold Steel, but please, guys, if you want to, look me up. This is the offhand and dual dagger training tool that I have found that I absolutely love the most. So that's a must buy. Let's hit to number two. Long time viewers have seen this. This is my absolute favorite axe trainer. This is a Cold Steel Trench Hawk trainer. It's about 22 inches long. I'm sorry, 18. I'm looking, thinking of something else. It has a reasonable head. It is of a thickness that even though it has a spike, it's not devastating. It is superbly balanced. It flows and just does just about everything else. The only complaints I have is I may buy another one one of these days and just cut the spike off to see how it would function as essentially a Dane Axe. Because this spike is a little aggressive for um, rapid training. It still works. You can tell because I've worn the paint off the edge, strike edges and the blur, you know, edges where I've parried and caught with it. And speaking of parries, folks, again, I'm going to briefly arm you. Let's see if this rig will let me. Cool. You are holding a sword. You have the sword pointed at me. This is not a good place for me to be in. I don't like having... Axe comes up. Axe catches sword. Axe moves sword aside. And it's very hard to remove. This makes me happy. Whoop. Whoop. Did I lose you there for a second? You know what? I'm okay with that. It's funny. And you guys are here for that high-grade professional content. You only find on the historical fencing guild. This guy, again, usually rubs between 25, although I have seen it as low as under 10. Shop around. Know the product. Know the name. Shop around. And just get yourself a couple of these. These are absolutely great. 
again, cold seal. If you want to make one of these, let's say half again longer as a camp axe, give it a big head. That would be great. They tried to with the axe game hatchet and they switched the plastics and it sucks. So I can't recommend that. This, however, the other thing I like about this, that dagger and well, not the buckler, we'll talk about later, but you can buy the, the, the axe that this is make based off of for less than 50. So you can get a tactical tomahawk style changeable bladed axe that you then have a match trainer for. And if you are going to carry something, at least train with an approximate. And if the manufacturer is going to be wise enough to make something like this that you can train for, it will come in all black, but it takes the Krylon uh, that bonds to plastic obviously very well. This is the offhand trainer. I love it. Let's go to our third and final offering. All right, I had to delay the, this buckler getting discussed because it was the point of interest for a few wasps being a big orange looking flower like product. But they of course are normally black. This is the cold steel medieval buckler. Not to be confused with the Tarj, which is a bit bigger, but only a little bit. This, like I said with the, pre, with the parry dagger, is great because it trains your thumb. So you can get a traditional grip and this fits most medium to size hands. Some of the weaker people will find this a little heavy. And if that's the case, there are alternatives that we can discuss for training and build up. Because this is a couple pounds. Now, why is this so heavy? This is a pound and some change. Because you want weight in your shield to stabilize it. Weight is what helps it shrug off blows when you're blocking. Now, I'm going to be following this video up with a short video on buckler defense, I, ca I had planned to have an assistant, but my wife is uh, doing physical therapy right now, so she can't. And I can't hold that uh, buckler video off any longer. So I'll do that as a real quick one later. However, this gives you good defense. It's nearly invincible. I have just hammered and mistreated this thing. And it has a few dings. As long as you keep all these weapons with class weapons. So plastic versus plastic. Steel versus steel kind of things. This will hold up to wood pretty well. I wouldn't use them in steel applications. But gosh, it's just so nice to be able to buy something without having to make it. Have it arrive. It, it just works. You put it there. It holds up. It just does what it needs to do. So, you know, I'll, brief. Bucklers, little shields like this work on a cone of defense. That means the farther out it is, the more coverage you have. It is a visual defense because you're, you're using perspective to trick your opponent, essentially. Many of the parries are actually done with the edge of the buckler in a usually cross pattern. So it's very simple to use. Now, when you see me fight buckler, because I'm a relatively small guy, this is a relatively beefy buckler, and I have some shield work, I fight it as a hybrid shield. I fight this much more like a, a small round shield than I do a large buckler. How do I do that? Take the standard. Let me see if I can get... I think the lighting's pretty good. Thumb goes here. Push it. Thumb is in the crack here. That gives me... A place to cock it bring it down so i have a positive grip this slight angle and now the buckler while it gives a much narrower angle of protection it has an integrated deflection so i can aggressively parry and i'm more dominated to this side until i flip it like this and parry into it i don't always have the strength to handle that but i ha usually have something in this hand in the nature of a sword so something like this. Now, buckler and sword, early period, to buckler and rapier. The buckler functioned as a secondary guard. So I'm keeping my middle road closed. I'm doing my strikes. The buckler is serving to protect my hand from their right. Most uh, Western fighting techniques are built on right versus right. It's why they hated left-handed fencers. This guy usually orbits around 25 to 50. 
you can find it cheaper and pay attention if you do snag them up. These guys are the holy trinity in getting started. If you're using, you know, plastic style weapons, that's rolling synthetic swords, anything of the plastics by Black Fencer or good friends at Purple Heart Armory, consider just dropping between a hundred bucks. For under a hundred bucks, you should be able to get all three of these weapons, often under 75. They will serve you for decades and require literally no maintenance. If you paint them, they'll last even longer. Don't leave them out in the sun too long. Pla no plastics like that. Other than that, those are my top three basic offhand weapons. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, one, like, share, subscribe, because I'm fighting the Facebook algorithm. Facebook, yeah, them too. The YouTube algorithm uh, dragon. And as always, it's winning, folks, because I'm counted as a Second Amendment channel because of swords. But uh, if you want to support what I'm doing, consider becoming a Patreon member for just a month, just a dollar a month. You can help fund the, the trainers that I buy so that other people don't, so that they can review them. Uh, keep me running the lights and feeding folks so that I can keep providing free services to people with... Uh, special needs, disabilities, and uh, survivors of mental trauma, which is what I geared out this to do. Other than that, if you like my style of fighting and you want to learn more, look up The Simple Sword or The Fighting Axe, both available through Amazon at www.amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Tockert. And as always, folks, be good to yourselves. Keep your guard up. Keep drilling. And by all means, support your local Swordmaster. Welcome to the Rising Tide Broadcast Network. Here you will find a variety of shows which cover a wide array of interests. From comics to creativity, mysteries to mixology, and science to history, there's something for all interests at the Rising Tide. There are shows every day of the week, daytime and nighttime, so take a look at our schedule and see what appeals to you. If you're interested in comics, both independent and mainstream, check out Comics Chaos and Sass or Comic Book Spectrum or from the desk of a small press publisher. If you want encouragement and advice on furthering your creativity, we have Creative as Hail and Tidbits and Scribbles. If you enjoy mysteries and conspiracy theories, we have The Truth Mongers. If you're into interviews with up-and-coming talents, there is a TED Talks made just for you, as well as Clever Title Pending. If you're into classic combat sports, there's the Historical Fencing Guild. And if you want to know what it's like to hang out with convention regulars, we have Stupid O'Clock and Last Man Standing. If you want witty repartee and best face fun, check out Nevermind the Furthermore. If the science of rocketry and space flight is your thing, we have Armchair Rocket Science. But that's by no means all the Racing Tide has to offer. New shows will be added as they develop, so stay tuned. All Rising Tide shows share a spirit of mutual cooperation under the philosophy that a rising tide raises all ships. Lightly ruled over by our comic ringmaster of mayhem, Brian K. Morris, we support and promote each other's works. What helps one of us to greater success helps all of us achieve even more successes. So look at the schedule, check out the shows, and we're sure that you will want to come back for more.